Hello, hello. Today I will be commenting on another, uh, well, I guess you can call it lower tier. Uh, it gets a bit arguable considering I'm actually playing T6, the Ognivoy here. Calling T6 lower tier, eh, pretty arguable. But uh, I'll include it in my lower tier guides anyways because a lot of people seem to stumble quite a bit with the Ognivoy. Now, one of the huge issues with the Ognivoy is, of course, the concealment. This is the first time the concealment really takes that massive leap. It goes from, I think, 6.7 on the Gneveni to 7.5 on this one. So, if you charge into a cap, I, as you see, I keep pinging the guys behind me and spamming requesting support because I want some help with the cap because I know I'm going to be spotted. Now the idea here is, when I get spotted, I'm just gonna, I have my speed boost active, I'm just gonna use the ridiculous Russian speed to close the distance. You see, I, tur I turn to avoid shells from the Vidyoni and Omaha, and I'm basically just gonna close the distance with this whatever DD it is that's spotting me, so I can force him out of the cap. Okay, it's a Mutsuki. Instantly close the distance, open up with the two tur with the four guns. Much like the Gnevni, this has four guns, but unlike the Gnevni, it has it on two turrets. Now, before they actually fixed uh, turret destruction, this ship was horrid to play, absolutely horrid. You kept losing the turrets everywhere and it was such a demoralizing thing to happen. You'd lose half your firepower when one of the turrets died and they would die to the dumbest stuff, like secondaries would randomly break them permanently. It was a horrible ship. But the turret destruction kind of helped fix that and uh, now it's actually not that bad to play because uh, Unlike the Gnevni, which suffers from absolutely horrid turret traverse, uh, because this has a different kind of turret setup, you actually have a significantly faster turret traverse on the Ognevoy, which makes it much more enjoyable to play. Now you notice here that I angle myself slightly towards the smoke, so that I can shoot in case the Omaha that was there pops up, or if the Mutsuki decides to push, I can shoot, but I'm also angled, so I'm not showing full broadside toward, towards where the Mutsuki last saw me, because if I was showing full broadside, it would be very hard to dodge any incoming torps. Now here I show something that's kind of unique to the Soviet DDs ever since T5, and that is the AP is very, very strong against pretty much any sort of broadside. You see this Omaha is showing me broadside, and I switch to AP, and of course he has no idea what's going on, but that was uh, 5, 6 Citadels plus the other damage. 6 Citadels at 2.5k of pop, that suddenly adds up to 15,000 damage to a cruiser, that's a lot. Now the smoke fades and the Mutsuki is pushing in. So once again I force him away, I throw some random torps. I'm not really attempting to hit him, it's just in case he tries to charge me and torp me, those will cause him some trouble. So I keep hammering him, I turn away because obviously I don't want to charge him, even though I think I could take the fight, he has too much support in, in form of the rest of his fleet, whereas my fleet isn't really supporting me. So I'm just kiting away and I'm using the fact that I can shoot two guns in the back and that the fact that the turret traverse is fairly good to turn my guns around. Now once again, a cruiser challenges me, I see that there's not much that can shoot me from the other side, so I start slowing down and I switch to AP again. Koenigsberg, much like the Omaha, much like ships like the Eoba and Cleveland and all these, t even Pensacolas and all these, they have such thin armor that you don't have much is issues penetrating this armor with your AP. So of course I switch to AP again and I start hammering him. I've slowed down, I know this, I might be vulnerable here, but I know that the cruiser is pushing in, so the Königsberg is going to have to focus on the cruiser now. So while the cruiser is distracting him, well, I'm hammering citadels into him, and this DPM adds up real fast. When you consider a single volley, if you get four citadels, can do 10k damage, you see just how much damage it, it quickly adds up, and that was six citadels on him as well, and him deleted. So you can't just ignore, as a cruiser, you can't just ignore an omnibor on the side if he switches to if he switches to AP. Now since this Mutsuki keeps pushing into this camp, I of course switch to HE and I continue harassing him. Uh, Mutsuki is a huge threat to the rest of my team and it's someone I have no issues dealing with. Of course it can also be a frustration to me by spotting me far outside of my range because Mutsuki did concealment is um, 6 kilometers, my concealment is 7.5 so obviously now that he's spotted I take every chance I can to just pump some damage into him. And of course I turn away though, I don't want to cross into the cap because then all this uh, stuff that's on the other side of the cliff, aka south of me, would be able to shoot me. That's something you gotta always keep in mind when you're playing, well, any sort of gunboat really. Um, your maneuverability keeps you alive, but also your ability to zone out enemy fire. Keeping land masses between you and enemies is a hugely important thing for keeping yourself safe. Oh, a Farragut? 
This is so close that I smoke up. There's, I see that there's planes here who will be in the vision of this Farragut, so I know that I'll be able to deal some significant damage to him. The Farragut is, is of course the USDD equivalent of the Ognamoy, um, but the difference is that at longer ranges you have the advantage, at closer ranges he has because with five guns he will do m and faster reload he will do more DPM than you will. But at long ranges where he has to deal with the USDD rainbow arcs, uh, you have no issues landing shells on him. So I of course take this advantage to smoke up and deal as much damage as possible. Now what did I just say about light cruisers and what shit did I mention? The Aoba. And as you can see the Aoba is pushing in. So as soon as I notice him, is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. I close as, uh, the distance as close as I can. I turn not too much. I don't want to be giving full broadside in case he decides to torp into the smoke. But as soon as I got this open broadside, now you see, once again, Citadel Fiesta. It's just so potent. That's, well, 5k bullet. I only landed two Citadels, so that, that's how much damage you, you could out with these guns. It's not to be underestimated. Yes, it's only two turrets. Yes, it's a few, uh, only four guns. But when you start landing 2.5k per hit on these cruisers, it quickly adds up with this fire rate. And seeing as he many citadels, he might have probably used his repair, so a fire might be quite permanent on him in fact. And the Mutsuki spotted again, so once again I instantly switch to him and start picking on him, him instead. You see that I'm quickly closing the distance with the cliff though, because once again I want to zone, I want to line of sight these two cruisers that could shoot at me. I don't want them to be able to shoot at me, so I don't even care if I'm ramming straight into the island. I just want to make, make sure this cliff is between me and these two cruisers, so that they, they don't have firing arcs on me. And I managed to do that. The only thing spotting me is the plane, so I quickly toggle on anti air. I usually have a toggle off, of, of course. I toggle it on and I focus fire it. And basically, well, did I focus fire? And I just let my anti air deal with that spotter plane. So I'm undetected again, and now I can close the distance again. This Mutsuki is spotted. The Cleveland will spot me if I go around this cliff. No, he's 7.6 kilometers away, so he will not spot me. So the Mutsuki doesn't really know I'm here. And from this range, you don't have many issues landing shells because of the ac accuracy and the general speed of the shells. Now, Cleveland is one of those ships I actually prefer to shoot HE instead of APF because the Cleveland has very thin uh, armor on the superstructure, so you do pretty much max damage with HE all the time. So HE does a lot of damage on it, and also the Citadel can be quite tricky to hit with these small guns, so I prefer to just go HE spam on it. And at these distances, where the, um, if you keep a long distance like I'm here, it's really very hard for the Cleveland to hit you because of your fast speed and the very floaty arcs of the Cleveland. So keeping on the move and at this distance, the Cleveland would honestly struggle to deal with you. And he notices this fairly quickly and turns away. He doesn't really want to deal with me because I'm frustrating for him. He repaired the fire, so I'm obviously going to see if I can get a second one. Sort of Farragut, see if I can deal with him. Whenever any BDDs are spotted, taking pot shots at them is always great. Here I see the boat, so of course, that's my, once again, my priority target. You can see the increased range I have here. That's of course because the first perk, and the most highly recommended perk to take first on Russian BDDs, is absolutely um, AFT. You need to increase that range. It's the first, first four point perk that I recommend for Russian DDs. You need to get that increased range. Well, this bogue is very much dead. Like, at, you see that I can sit at him, that's because he has such thin armor. But these guns are honestly quite potent. Especially for T6. You get the potent guns at T5 with the Gnevini, and that's when you should already start experimenting with switching to AP because there are so many uh, low tier cruisers that you can just demolish, like the Kuma and uh, Phoenix and Svetlana and the Karlsruhe. All of these are very sus susceptible to AP fire. Now, seeing as this camp is open and they don't really have much contesting it, I'm just gonna sneak into this camp. I still have a smoke. Um, that's because I run the premium smoke. I don't I run the premium smoke on this ship that much for the lowered cooldown as much as I run it for um, the having the one additional smoke. Since on this ship, it's kind of easy to blow through those smokes. I'm a bit tempted here to fire, but since I already have AP loaded and this area was giving broadside, I decided to go for the area. Not getting citadels since he's angling. Now I lost vision. Hopefully the bomber plane will come back and I'll get vision back in a second. Just got the vision. Let's move forward a bit. He's probably torping. 
I hear the torps. Okay, there's a nice gap for me to fit into. Wait, wait, wait. I'm full. No, actually, I'm not stopping first. Wow. Okay, so I go from playing this really well <laughs> to eating the dumbest torp possible. I should have been able to dodge that torp. Honestly, I, I overestimated uh, the engine power or basically the stopping power of the ship. Kind of like most Russian DDs, they're they are a bit glidy when it comes to stopping because they are so fast, so when you want to stop and reverse, um, it actually takes much longer than you usually expect. But, shit happens, uh, the game ended, of course, and um, let's see, the score is quite good. It's sad that it, I didn't do this during this game during the triple X, XP weekend, but I was playing my main account then. 17 Citadels, a very nice chunk of XP, and my team managed to pull out the victory here, which is, of course, always satisfying. And, Wow, that, torp, that one torp really bothers me right now. But you know, such things happen if you're a potato, apparently. <laughs> anyway, moving on to Captain Perks, modules and upgrades. Right, as usual, I'll start with the modules. Um, the first upgrade is absolutely range. The main hull doesn't affect your guns at all, so what you want is the additional range, because the default range of 10.9 is pretty terrible. So go with range, follow it up with the hull, and then there's this torp upgrade that I honestly, 6,000 XP and half a million credits for 5 knots of speed and 700 damage. Like, I just don't rate it. I don't think it's worth it. I mean, if you really enjoy the Ognevoy and you want to play the Ognevoy for a long time, then of course I recommend it. Like, if you want to take it to T6 ranked or something. But if you're just going straight for the Kiev, don't bother. It's not really worth the investment. Anyway, uh, consumable wise, of course, always use the premium repair. And on this ship, I also use the premium smoke. I use it on most DDs, honestly, but on the Ognevoy especially, I want that additional smoke because two smokes are too few. And just the default engine boost, it's not that often used. A module wise, upgrade wise, uh, gun modules one and two, of course, for aiming and damage control system. And finally, of course, rudder shift, so you get that juicy 3.8 second rudder shift. Because as I said, uh, there that the Russian ships are kind of glidy, it also uh, affects dodging torps. Uh, basic foreign trading as the first perk, last stand. Now, going for last stand instead of expert marksman makes playing the Gnevni pretty awkward since you have to deal with the extremely slow uh, turret traverse, but it's worth it in the end unless you want to respec later. And with vigilance, because dodging torps will be more important than having that additional smoke, and AFT for the additional range, which you saw me use, for example, to destroy that bow. And the next perk I'll probably get will be Demolition Expert, since I'm of course building up to the 3x4 build. Anyway, that was my Omnivore commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it.